Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So Denzel Washington has a film out called Roman J. Israel Esquire. It's about an African-American criminal defense attorney. And recently Denzel Washington was asked whether or not his involvement in that film caused him to have a more cynical view of the criminal justice system. And this is what Denzel Washington had to say. He said, it starts in the home. If the father is not in the home, the boy will find a father in the streets. I saw it in my generation and every generation before me and everyone since. If the streets raise you, the judge becomes your mother and prison becomes your home. And then he also said this. He said, so, you know, I can't blame the system. It's unfortunate that we make such easy work for them. Now I want to take time to respond to what Denzel Washington had to say. Uh, the first point is this. I understand the importance of having a father in a household or having strong black male role models. That's something that I don't dispute. You know, no one will dispute that. We understand that some young black men who do not have a father in the household or do not have positive male role models around them, they end up in a life of crime. They end up looking to the drug dealer, looking to the gangster, looking to the pimp as some kind of role model for what it means to be a man. And that leads them down a life of crime, a life of imprisonment, a life of an early death. So we know that that's a very real problem. But at the same time, we know that there are plenty of young black boys who are raised in single parent households who end up becoming successful and productive citizens in society. So we need to stop assuming that because somebody grows up in a single parent household that they're gonna to go to the streets to look for a, a father figure. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, a lot of people find inspiration elsewhere or their father may be involved in their lives in other types of ways, even though the father does not live in the household. You know, so that's the first point that I want to make. The second point is this. I understand the importance of personal responsibility. Ultimately, our personal decisions affect our lives. I understand the importance of parental guidance. You know, I understand the importance of raising children up with the proper values, teaching them, you know, about hard work, about perseverance, about the importance of an education, about the importance of striving for excellence. I understand the importance of that. So that cannot be downplayed. The importance of the home is not something that can be negated you know, not something that can be brushed aside. It's something that's very important. And we need to educate our children so that they will do everything in their power to avoid getting entangled in the criminal justice system. Everything that they can do to avoid even having interactions with the police at all. So we have to take responsibility. We cannot sit around and just wait for this system to change itself. Otherwise, we render ourselves helpless and we get involved in a situation where we are perpetual victims. You know, so I understand that. We can't afford to sit around and wait for the system to change. We need to do what we can while we can to change our, our condition. And one thing that we can do is become the role models that our young men need to see. Get involved in these young men's lives and very through organizations. You know, provide an example for young men. Guide these young men. Don't just point the finger and blame the single mother. Get involved in your community and help make a difference. Be the one to guide these children. The one to inspire them to do better. You know, because values are very important. Even if someone is in harsh conditions, there are exceptions. People are able to arise above those conditions and become successful in life. We've seen examples of this. 
But this is what I'll say um, in response to Denzel. One of the only problem that I have with what he said is when he said, so I don't blame the system. That's where I disagree with him. I have to blame the system. You know, I understand the role of personal responsibility. I understand the, the issue of absent fathers in some households and all that stuff. But you have to look at the system for what it is, this society for what it is. We live in a society that neglects the black community, where you have black communities with high unemployment rates. You have black communities with high poverty rates. You have black communities with failing schools and situations where people lack the opportunity for um, meaningful work where they lack the opportunity to advance their lives. And in such a condition, people become vulnerable to drugs and to violence. They become vulnerable, much like how someone whose immune system has been compromised becomes vulnerable. Much like how someone with HIV, their immune, immune system becomes weak and they become susceptible to all kinds of diseases and viruses and sicknesses. And that's what has happened to the black community. Because of poverty and these other conditions that I mentioned, the community is vulnerable. When people do not have a legitimate means to earn a living, they become vulnerable. It becomes easy for them to get caught up into selling drugs or using drugs to ease their pain. It becomes easy. And when someone is involved in a drug trade, often they have to use weapons to defend themselves or to defend their market and all that kind of stuff. So that perpetuates the violence that we see. We see that. So a lot of people get caught up into the criminal justice system because of these economic conditions that fuel the crime. And on top of that, you have a criminal justice system that targets black communities, as documented in Michelle Alexander's masterpiece, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. That's what happens. You know, even though black people and white people use and sell drugs at similar rates, Law enforcement targets black communities. They target black communities with harsher sentences. They target black communities for incarceration. That's what they do. You know, it's been documented that when Nixon started the whole war on drugs, he was trying to wage war against black communities and so-called hippies. And what we're seeing are the, the modern day results of that war that's been going on for decades now. A war that targets black communities for mass incarceration, targets black communities with harsher sentences. We can see it in the, the sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine. A situation where if someone was caught with crack cocaine, they were sentenced you know, much more harshly you know, the sentencing disparity at one point was 100 to 1. They knew that black communities were more likely to be engaged in the crack trade because crack is a, a cheaper drug than powder cocaine. People who use powder cocaine tend to be affluent people, more white people. So they knew when they imposed those harsh sentences that it would have a greater impact on black communities, a more negative impact on black communities. So I can't absolve this system. I can't absolve a system that creates economic conditions that make black communities vulnerable to the drug trade and then locks them up and targets them more harshly than they do other groups of people. I can't absolve that system. I have to condemn that system. I have to condemn a system where you have an entertainment industry run by white people, an entertainment industry that celebrates drug use, an entertainment industry that celebrates violence, 
the entertainment industry that celebrates drug dealing and pimping and all this other negativity. I can't absolve a system that allows that to happen. You know, and it reminds me of an interview that I saw with Jay Electronica where he was talking about how they can control the culture, they can control the people. And these people have control over this hip-hop culture. They control it. You know, they decide which artists get signed, which artists get promoted, and often it's the most negative artists. They present the most negative messages to our young people. They get promoted. They get played over and over again on the radio, and that has an impact on the psyche of our people. I can't absolve such a system. I can't. I won't. You know, while we hold individuals accountable, we must hold the system accountable as well. We must hold them accountable. So those are my thoughts. Tell me what you think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.